Yes, John. No mic. No mic. Hey, talk about the, the, the stress that was coming on the, all of the Christians in Jerusalem. Paul speaking to Corinthians. In what way could we expect there to be a parallel? We know Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. Corinth expected to be destroyed. Corinth was not expected to be destroyed. Just like um, in, in, um, in my illustration, like I, you know, let's say here in Morgantown, you know, Philadelphia is going to be destroyed. That is might be an explicit statement that Morgantown is not going to be destroyed. However, there's going to be tremendous implications for, for Morgantown. And Jerusalem was, it, 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 it was the center of worship. And to, to think that your center of worship, it, I mean, that, this is a bad illustration. The only illustration I can think of, if you were to tell a Muslim that Mecca and Medina were going to be destroyed. Wow. Now, I would argue, in a sense, that Jerusalem sort of had to be destroyed, not just because of what I said it would be, but they, I, I, I personally believe, and I'm open to argument on this, but I believe that if Jerusalem would not have been destroyed, they wouldn't have ever gotten the point that this was an international thing, and they really were supposed to go. Uh, think about it. Before they lived out, out here, and they went to Jerusalem prior prior to Jerusalem being destroyed, prior to Christ's ministry. After Christ's ministry, it was opposite. It was supposed to start at Jerusalem and go out there. And I I question whether they would have gotten the point if Jerusalem would have ever been destroyed. I, I, I question it. But it would have implications wherever, wherever uh, the truth of gospel was going out. But if it had been the center, and it did that, the cultural center, it, it, it was where the, the Levites, I mean, the, the commentaries were there, the smart people were there, the writers were there, everything was in Jerusalem. Yep. It was Jewish. Yes, it, it, was, it was Jewish. Absolutely. So I think you want to make another point, though. No, I oh, Okay. Yeah. It, 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 I told you that Jerusalem wasn't the center of Christian worship. No, well, I... It was, John, I would argue, it was perceived center of Christian worship. It would have been perceived at the time. We see the arguments going on in Acts 15, for example, about, you know, and they were just tied to the old, the old way. And Paul had to argue, forget about certain, it means nothing now. And Jerusalem, it means nothing. It really means nothing. To tell a person at that time Jerusalem means nothing would have been, frankly, almost heretical. Stony for something like that. Still, you're right, it's still is. And, and when we were there, you see him lying up on that whaling wall. Wow. Yeah, even some of the Christians think the whaling wall is something special. It's godless and idolatrous. Yes? Maybe you covered this in your next installment, but you said that. Always in the next installment. <laughs> um, so we know Paul's talking specifically about the destruction when he's talking about this get married, don't get married, right? So how does that apply to us today, then? Do we apply that to any person today, or? Yeah, that is the question, I think, that is on a lot of people's minds. Certainly, we can't, we, we can't go on with our fists in God's face and expecting to keep on blessing us. In fact, God's blessing is what we ate. Which is terrible. There's other parts of scripture that actually address this more. And if you want a guy to study, his name is Jonadab. And he shows up in the book of Isaiah. And Jonadab knew that destruction was coming. And he encouraged his ascendants to do certain things in light of that destruction. Maybe I'll speak, you know what? Maybe I'll speak to that passage as part of this, what we're doing. i got, I got to think about that. It's very practical stuff. And it's right in the Bible. It's John and Dad and Jeremiah. Yes? Um, this person in distress, could that be referring to persecution? Just overall, because Christians are persecuted pretty much everywhere. Never really acceptable anyway, right? I mean, everywhere Paul went, he was in this place of distress. So, 
something that Paul was always in distress. I think it, I think it actually uh, refers more to the coming distress. The reason why is because he says the time is two reasons actually. He says the time is short. So it seems as if he's talking about something that's coming. The second part of it is, it seems like, for the wrong reason, the least persecuted church, all Paul's uh, recipients of the New Testament, kind of seems to be carnal. It seems like they were like comfortable with uh, their situations. I, I, I it, it, it certainly could be that because of the word present, this present distress. But I see that I see the time, the time short there. Look, look into something that happened. But I certainly wouldn't rule it out. Good questions. Other questions. Yes, wife. Um, I'm certain to that. Um, I'm sorry, can you speak up for something? Uh, I'm certain the passage that John read this morning. Yes. Um, it's kind of off track from what you talked about today. Yes. I've been getting a lot of questions from people about um, Old Testament law. And what applies now versus what needs to apply. Um, specifically, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And the punishment of homosexuality. Can you explain that a little more? Like, what, how, how we're supposed to answer people when they say, well, the Old Testament called for stoning homosexuals. Uh, we're supposed to be embarrassed and drop the subject <laughs> and never talk about it again. And we're supposed to. Um, let me just address that briefly. First of all, I said I would, I, I would get, to, and I didn't get to John's passage, but in the passage that we read this morning, there is a connection between multiplying in the land, which always has to do with being married and God blessing the marriage, and idolatry. The end of the passage John read this morning. Um, Moses saying, you're going, to, you're going to chase the people out of here, and you're not going to serve with God's people in the next day. Now, we're going to talk about more next week, but at the end of this passage, it's, it, it, it's, it's interesting the way Paul does it. Paul does it the exact same way as Moses does it. He talks about marriage here, and then the next chapter, he's going to start talking about idolatry. He starts right away with that. The connection between the two. There's always a connection between the failure of the family as God's unit, and idolatry. Now, about the uh, stoning thing. Um, first of all, no one's ever supposed to get stoned because they took part in a parade, for example, or attended an event. The only way it ever happened was with witnesses. So that's the first thing. Someone said, and, and, and I, I'm with Vody Balkum on this point. Vody Balkum has said, we don't even know what a homosexual is. We know that we know what participating in homosexual acts is, but what is a homosexual? And I, I think he's got a point there. I thought a lot about that. What is that person? Some person that participated in that 20 years ago and did it again? Is that you know, you know, what is it? So it's for specific acts that this happens. Uh, I've never had anyone say to me, hey, you believe that? Yeah. I said, well, if anybody ever does, this is going to be my response. Don't talk to me about how bad the law is for wanting to stone people who have acts of great perversion to offend God and offend your neighbor. We have the blood of 55 million dead babies on our hands who have offended no one. So until you're willing to get with me on that issue, don't talk to me about stoning homosexuals. Don't even talk. But you're not serious. You want to preserve innocent life? Get serious. All right. Yes? About the presence of stress. Don't you think that was that whole thing was also about the whole change of their system? I mean, it wasn't just the destruction of Jerusalem, it was like you still get it now with the dispensational churches when you talk about some of that stuff. Maybe not the people who make it, but you get tossed out, but you bring up the idea, no, but that whole system. Is it relevant? Or 
comment or a question um, would you say the same advice applies to any situation where you don't feel like you'd be able to care for a wife and children where maybe it'd be all right to get married but it'd be better not to yeah so I mean essentially that advice could apply depending on what your scenario Absolutely could is. apply to us today sure could uh, I want to be a missionary to North Korea where as soon as they find out you're a Christian you're in jail or dead or how about I want to be a missionary to uh, Saudi Arabia. Israel, Israel does not take missionaries. You're not allowed to be a missionary there. The things that they might happen to Israel might not be as bad as like Saudi Arabia. Let, let's say, I mean, how, how would you and I handle it? Um, okay, one of my kids comes in. Hey, Dad, I feel the Lord's called me to be a missionary to Saudi Arabia. Okay. Keep talking. And here's what I would do. I fell in love with this girl, and um, we're going to go, we're going to get married, we're going to go two years to language school, and then we're going to Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, and start a church. Okay, you're the dad. What's the next thing going to come out of your mouth? Congrats on the mission to call the song Saudi Arabia, not going to stop you might want to hold off on the marriage thing and the children thing. Uh, give me a term or two in Saudi Arabia. If you come back, then maybe we'll talk. Really, that's the way, that's the way I would seriously approach it. Do not bring a wife and children there in a, in a, in a situation where you're, you're going to get killed. Don't do it. And there's other things as well. Maybe being a contractor in a foreign country, like someplace in the Middle East, get killed. Your head cut off. So yeah, absolutely applies, or may apply. I just want to thank you folks for uh, working with us as we, as we work through these, these things. Uh, so often here at IRBC, it, it starts out kind of, uh, um, what's my word? Um, kind of like in the ivory tower. But it, it, it always comes out during this, during this time. So thank you for, for participating with us in this interaction time. <laughs>